Well, at this point, this is an awfully easy game, so let's give the orcs a means to fight back by throwing rocks. We add an attack method on the orc object, and we're going to instantiate a rock. We don't have the class yet for that, but we'll create it momentarily. As with the dwarf's axes, we set the rock's position equal to that of the orc that threw it. And we tell the rock to move at an angle of 180 degrees, that is straight downwards, at a speed of 0 0.5. We'll also have the orc perform the throwing animation, so it looks like he's throwing the rock. Finally, we tell the game state sound manager to play a sound as the rock is thrown. <laughs> So, orcs have the ability to throw rocks now, but they're not actually using it. The orcs need something to coordinate their attacks, and we'll do that through our own custom manager. If you create a manager subdirectory, you can store your own manager classes within it. We'll call our new class an enemy manager. Within enemy manager.rb, we'll create the enemy manager class, and it's going to be just another game object. Game states know that managers exist and that they're assigned to manage certain things, but aside from that, they don't differ from game objects in any other way. We'll give our manager the updates behavior so that it gets events when the game state is updated. And for now, we'll specify that when there's an update, we should call the attack method of the enemy manager. Update handlers receive a delta value, the amount of time since the last update. And what we'll do here is choose one of the enemies under our control at random and tell it to attack for us. Not every object on the playfield is an enemy, though. The Game State's Game Object Manager has a list of all the active game objects. If you recall earlier, we gave the orc the taggable behavior, which gives it the has tag method, and then we assigned it the enemy tag. So if an object has the tag enemy, we'll consider it to be one of the enemies under our control. All we've done at this point, though, is create the enemy manager class. The state isn't actually using it to manage enemies yet. So within our play state's load method, we set the enemy manager to a new instance of the enemy manager class. One more detail to take care of before we begin our coordinated attack. We need rocks to throw. Rocks are very similar to axes, so I'm going to spare you the details of their implementation. We start back up, and the game seems to be running very slowly for some reason. And it's probably because the enemies are attacking constantly. Let's set the enemy manager up to only attack after a certain amount of time has elapsed. This is where the delta value passed to the update handler comes in handy. We'll accumulate them and store them as the total time since the last attack. And we'll skip attacking if not enough time has elapsed since the last attack. And what constitutes enough time? Well, it's going to be stored in this attack delay variable.
and we'll set the attack delay via the predict next attack method. We'll wait a minimum of 1000 milliseconds, that's one second between attacks. And then in addition to that, we'll have a random delay of up to three seconds more. When it is time to attack, we'll reset our timer. And call predict next attack to set the delay before another attack. We also have a little housekeeping to do in the load method to set the initial attack. So now starting the game, you can see that the attacks are a bit more spaced out, but our poor orcs, bless their hearts, are simply hitting themselves in their heads with their own rocks. We've already told rocks to ignore collisions with other rocks. In similar fashion, we'll tell them to ignore collisions with the enemies that throw them. And there go our projectiles safely on their way. This is still too easy. Let's give our player moving targets. We start by setting up a walk speed for our orcs, and we're going to give them move left and move right methods similar to what the dwarf has. Then each method will check if we're already dead and skip moving if so. We change our X position to the left or right as appropriate and we're also going to do the walk animation. The enemy manager is going to be responsible for having the orcs move in a coordinated fashion. First we set a duration of time that they should walk in one direction for so they don't go forever one way. And just as the attack method is registered as an update handler, we'll register the move method as well. And as we track the time since our last attack, we're also going to track the time we've been walking in one direction. We then call reset move direction, which will change from calling the move right method on all the enemies to move left, or vice versa. And there you have it, moving, shooting enemies. Obviously this little demo can be taken quite a bit further, but we've shown you all the basics of Gemini. With what you've learned today, plus the helpful documentation and forms on Gemini.org, you should be ready to start your own game.